and welcome to this tech talk about Cisco Unified Communications Manager Express. I'm Marin Mahoney. I'll be your host today. <laughs> um, in this particular tech talk webinar, um, this is the second of three, we're going to be deploying conference and transcode resources and having them register to and be managed by CUCME. Um, Earlier this morning, I did a webinar on getting CUCME up and running, uh, just, you know, global commands, getting SIP and skinny CUCME running, getting phones registered. And one of the questions I was asked in that earlier session was, well, why are we bothering with skinny CUCME? You know, who uses skinny phones anymore? Well, you know, people do. But more importantly, our transcode and conference resources, as we will see, are going to register to the skinny CUCME process. So even if you don't have uh, skinny telephones, you may need uh, you know, skinny set up uh, to get this stuff running. So we're going to get the uh, transcode and conference resources deployed. We'll have them register to CUCME. And then inside CUCME, we will deploy ad hoc and meet me conferencing. Um, tomorrow, I'll be doing a third webinar in this series on CUCME. Uh, looking at some of the features, just uh, some of the popular features used. Um, it's just a small smattering of the wide variety of things that CUCME can do. So here we go. So we're going to configure our DSP farm pro uh, and profiles. We will get the DSP uh, resources to register with CUCME, so we'll point them at the CUCME process. We will then configure CUCME to accept those registrations. And at that point, uh, we should be able to do like, you know, show skinny and um, whatnot to see you know, what the status is of all of that. It should all register. And then we'll be configuring ad hoc and meet me conferencing inside uh, CUCME. Uh, along with this, I'm going to go into more detail about this in tomorrow's session. But if I'm going to use meet me, I need to either have probably a meet me soft key or a meet me button. And I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that those are deployed to my phone. So we're gonna very quickly see how we can use templates to enhance this kind of functionality. Additionally, there are some uh, commands that you can add into your templates that uh, alleviate the, the, the requirement to add some of these commands. And you'll see the ones I'm talking about directly to the phones themselves. So here we go, one thing at a time. First, deploying a DSP farm and profiles for conferencing and transcoding. So we're going to declare our DSP farm. Um, we're going to bind skinny before we set anything up in the, the DSP farms, before we associate anything to skinny, we're going to bind skinny to the um, interface uh, the, the, that we're using for Call Manager Express. And you can see the SCCP CCM group um, or the SCCP CCM, like where is Call Manager? This is the IP address we're using for uh, CUCME, and then my standard conference. I have another um, uh, profile set up for transcoding as well, but it looks very much like the transcoding. So let's get these into my Call Manager Express process. All right, so I'm going to get out of here. Oops, get out of here. Get back to my this. All right, and here we go. Alrighty, that gets the DSP farm running and everything bound correctly. Here's my conference profile. And then as I mentioned, I have a profile for my transcode too. Pretty standard stuff. All right. Next then, what are we gonna do? The next thing we need to do is go into um, the router and uh, associate, create this CCM group, and associate the uh, call manager that we created with the profiles that we created. So that's what we're doing here, and then turning Skinny on. Again, this is pretty, oops, shoot. Sorry about that. This is pretty standard stuff if you're doing any kind of uh, DSP resource configuration. Our next thing then, and here is the CUCME part. We'll go into telephony service. How many of our DSP resources are going to be able to register to this telephony process? If you have, for instance, local transcode resources registering to a cube, you're going to want to limit how many of those resources can be allocated to the CUCME process. 
Max transcode sessions should match what is in the profile that we created. Um, and then having tags for our conference and transcoder. Finally, conference hardware. By default, Call Manager Express for both Skinny and for SIP is going to use um, uh, uh, software conferencing unless we tell it we have conference hardware available. And then Max Conferences. Again, that should match the, um, uh, you know, something in the general vicinity of your profile. So let's get this in here. There we go. And we now have uh, conferencing resources. And in fact, I could do something like, let me do end, oops, end, show SCCP. And I should see that, um, oh, TCP connection error. I'll have, might have to reset something. Um, I'll have to look at that. Not sure what's going on there, but I'll, I'll figure that out. It might just be a timing thing here. Um, so the next thing we would need to do is to configure ad hoc conferencing. What I have set up here is an ePhone DN. This is how these things are done. I'm stating Octoline, which if you're going to be doing ad hoc conferencing is probably a good idea. You don't want to limit an ad hoc conference to two parties. Give it a number. And because we're doing ad hoc conferencing, I'm going to make this a non-dialable number. That way it does not interfere with my dial plan. Plus people can't dial it accidentally name for you know caller id what displays on the phone when i'm in a conference and what about this no hunt stop notice that i have a pair of ephone dns with the same number what i'm doing here is creating the ability to have a 16 party ad hoc conference now i wouldn't necessarily do this in a production environment i think that's an awful lot but if i do want to have uh you know large numbers of ad hoc conference members this is how you would do it no hunt stop on the first one and if you would want a third one you could do that and then preference one on this second number i have created a second conference number for a second conference call as well so there's that and then there is meet me in this case similar thing i've created a meet me number a pilot number which is um for for the meet me purpose again name uh and no hunt stop and preference one oh i need an e there gives me the 16 party meet me because i have two meet me numbers with the same number on it i need to do this unlocked business so that these can be you know interconnected right and then i've created a second meet me number for uh with just eight parties one more thing, this unlocked is a little bit dangerous. Now, this number happens to be part of my DID range. Uh, my DNs are five digit numbers starting with a five. And by doing unlocked, this means that external callers can dial it directly. And unfortunately, it also means that external callers can invoke it uh, in themselves. You know, if they just happen to know the number, they can dial in and start a meet me call. And you don't necessarily want that. In a production environment, I would make this not part of my DID range, and external callers would just have to be um, uh, added to the call. But I, if I'm going to have more than one number associated with the same meet me, I have to have that unlocked in order to have those get cross connected. So let's get these now into my call manager, Express. <laughs> And there we go. All right, so let's do our uh, show command again to take a look at our, um, our skinny process. I'm going to do show skinny. Oh, yeah, and good. I was hoping it would just be a matter of time. It is now showing active. Um, TCP link connected. Um, and if I do uh, show SCCP all, in addition to seeing that, I can also see what services have started. I've got my conferencing, my transcoding, my CCM group, 
bound to the IP address. It's showing me the IP address, associated profiles. So I'm ready to go. Um, I could now make conference calls. Now, the thing is that ad hoc conferencing is uh, a default setting as far as uh, like soft keys and whatnot are concerned, but Meet Me is not. So how do I, A, tweak the way that conferencing can work? And how do I tweak the way the soft keys look for the purposes of conferencing? And here we go. This is a template. Templates allow me to uh, create uh, you know, group settings for my DNs or for my phones. Here's my soft keys, seized, off hook. I'm adding meet me. So I can go off hook, press meet me and dial a meet me number. Soft keys connected. If I'm in a conference call, this is for ad hoc conferencing, uh, allows me to create a conference, to see the list of conference participants and to remove last. And these are things I would probably want to add. Now, for things like a conference list and remove last, usually that is only available to admins of conferences and not everybody or people are not admins by default. So I'm declaring everybody to be a conference admin. That way, when you start a conference call, you're the creator, you're also an admin and you can use these features. Conference drop mode local. This allows me to tell the system that the conference call should drop when either the conference uh, initiator, the creator leaves, or in this case, when only one participant that is on net, the conference call will drop if there are no more on net participants. Ditto, there's this keep conference. And what this command does is, and notice that that one's under voice register pool where these are part of the template. In skinny, I can put this as part of the template, but what this particular feature does is it says um, only the um, or, or, or conference calls will not get dropped uh, when there's only two participants, it will get changed back over to a point to point call via transfer. So we want to have this stuff in our router so that we can, um, uh, you know, have the, the you know, phones get these features and ditto for that matter. Here's the skinny set, right? E phone template one conference drop mode local, keep conference local only. And then here's my soft keys. And I'm also deploying in both cases a feature button, um, uh, meet me. So I have a button on my phone. So let's now add these two sets of commands. So voice register template one. There we go. And then I'm also going to add the e-phone template, I do have skinny phones in my environment. So I'm adding this as well. Then um, the other thing I need to do is add these templates to my phones and then reset the phone. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Right. And I'm gonna go to telephony, oops service. I probably should have done this before I did the reset. Um, and I'm going to create CNF files. And I'm going to go under um, voice register global and do the create profile. Now, let me keep an eye on my phones to make sure that they are rebooting. Give me a moment here. All right, my SIP phones are registered. And my skinny phones should be registered here in a moment. Well, in the meantime, um, let's take a quick peek at some of the show commands and debug commands for that matter that we have available to us. Um, to view how these things work. Um, so if you have conferences um, active in a uh, CME 
process, these first three commands, show ePhoneDN conference. Remember that um, ePhoneDNs are referring to the ad hoc and meet me conference numbers. So you know, if SIP calls are involved in conferencing, those would work too. Show telephony service conference hardware detail, shows me how these things are configured. And we already did the show DSP from basically all those, com those uh, commands are con included in the SCCP all. Show skinny connections, show VoIP RTP connections can also show me call legs that are anchored on my router. Um, if they're skinny and DSP based or anything that is an IP inbound. So let's take a look at some of these. Is my, yeah, my phones are now active. So let's start with this one. Show telephony service conference hardware detail. Oops. Again, I don't have any active calls, but it is showing me what I could have, you know, the kinds of information I could set. Let me go ahead and set up a conference call here. Give me one sec here. I'm going to dial from one of my SIP phones. I'm going to dial uh, 53003. Dial. Okay, off hook. Let me go ahead and mute because that's annoying. There we go. And then I'm going to conference in 52001. I'm going to conference in. Oh, 53001, my bad. And conference. Okay, sorry about that. That was interesting. And now I have a conference call. And I can see that I've got a conference call. I can see my conference parties, right? Who's involved, um, which uh, line they're using, which channel they're using. I can also do show. SCCP connections. And that will show me, and this is a similar thing you can do if you've got DSPs registered to call manager. Um, it shows me my session IDs, my connection IDs. And these are important because that follows it, this call through the router here. Uh, what codec am I using? Send, receive, show, VoIP, RTP connections. Sorry, I'm typing with one hand while I'm holding the uh, handsets with my other hand here and um, I can see local and remote try that again there we go no still not far enough well local and remote IPs um, session IDs oops right I um, uh, local and remote port numbers local and remote IP addresses and uh, the call legs themselves again if you think about how uh, calls are tracked inside a router there we go with that some of the other show commands I can do show SDSP farm sessions that's specific to being in a call manager environment, call manager express environment. Oops, there we go. that went per faster than I thought it was going to. Shows me each individual stream, both inbound and outbound. So I've got six streams, and here are the connections themselves. Uh, let's see. And show ePhone DN conference. This is a ad hoc conference that I created. There we go. Oh, and this is showing me my list. So I've got a pair of uh, uh, ad hoc conferences and I've got my ad hoc conferences. All DN tags are unlocked. And there we go. Um, that is uh, deploying ad, uh, sorry, deploying conference and transcode resources. The transcode are all the same. I just don't have a trans transcode requirement at the moment, um, but that's all there is to it. It's not particularly hard. Uh, there is plenty of documentation out there, and um, I hope this was useful to you, and I hope I see you tomorrow when I do the features uh, session. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Have a great day.